This hike and fly paragliding race runs along the border between Spain and France, because that's where mountains usually end up. I've jetted in from England, but I'm really from South Africa, so I've got a secret advantage. Fuss bait. I've got a backpack full of flying experience, but I'm too lazy to do the training required for this kind of thing. Some of my competitors can run all day up mountains. Now paraglider pilots normally walk a short way to a launch spot, then fly the whole day, which is what I'm hoping to do. Because in this race, you have to carry your own flying gear, and even the ultralight stuff gets heavy. The things I do for you. <laughs> if I'm lucky, I can capture my own demise in this film. This is it, the start line, the X Pier. I'm competing against an elite field of hardcore pilots, but I'll do my best to survive long enough to bring you the story. It's going to be epic. Everyone is buzzing just to be a part of it or complete their own odyssey through the Pyrenees. The winner will be the pilot with the best strategy, combining exceptional flying skill, smart route choices, and physical endurance. Or someone who just gets lucky and flies to the front? It's Keith's first time here, but I know what we'll be up against. Talented pilots who are hungry for success, fighting brutal weather in an unforgiving landscape. A race like this is made up of so many elements, so many decision points, that the placings are uncertain. Nah, I've got a better plan. I'll just run there. This first section is 20 k's along the flat to get yourself up to the main peak. Yeah, I know you're watching that live tracking and you're wondering what's happening. Why are all these pilots just running past Hamilton? Well, <laughs> you try run 20 k's and then walk up a mountain. <laughs> I'm doing my best here and I'm sweating. <laughs> It's all right, feeling okay, but definitely haven't got speed uphill. I'll catch them in the air. The next turn point is 94 kilometers away. There's no obvious route to follow. You make it up as you go along. Quick race recharge. Kerry's built the van, so having some highly nutritious lunch. I might fly later. I only have to take mandatory gear, which is that bag and a bit of water. I hit the road. Hey, I just got up to pass at the top of this big walk to the wonderful smells of Kerry's cooking. Secrets out. <laughs> Kerry can actually cook 
Slow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, your ball's over there. <laughs> Get your ball out. That one. Yeah, you get the dog. What have I got? Dog ball for me. Ooh. Power food. Power food. Look at that. Brilliant. <laughs> so Courtney's chilling. He's not yeah. doing any more hiking. Always. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your help up the hill, dude. That's Brilliant. right. That was good. On the walking down, I was like, why don't I bring my glider with me? <laughs> I was like, why didn't I bring I, it? I thought I'd mention it on the way up and then I thought, no, that would be too cruel because yeah. actually it was quite a quite a hard walk. Maybe we can do a little glide down the valley in a few k's, finish the day off um, comfortably at the back of the field somewhere <laughs> and hope to catch up a bit tomorrow. Um, I can make much more ground when it's flying. So see you soon. Maybe I'll be in the air. There was just a little sneaky hike and glide from that one up there. Managed to flick around the corner and glide down the valley and uh, cut off a good piece of walking. Um, the trail that I've landed on, it's just over there and leads up to the end of the valley. <laughs> they sent me a photograph of the van all bashed up. <laughs> And it was a doctored photograph of another van that had been broken, bust up, just winding me up. At any rate, they're off to enjoy the beer. I've sent them ahead up the pass because there's an awesome restaurant in the middle of nowhere. It's up on the Col de Isbegay, and uh, I thought they could go and have themselves a beer and chill out. And uh, maybe I can make it tonight. Um, I'm just going to put in some miles and get as close as I can to the top of the pass and then uh, we'll find a, a place to stop for the night. I've got an hour and a half left and this is my usual happy time in the day where I oh, just love this place, it looks beautiful and I'm feeling strong still and I'm just using up the last bit of my strength and then I'll chill. Good night. Oh, it's getting near the end of the day. Got half an hour left. But check at the spot my team has found for wild camping. We've got a river down here. And we're in the forest. Brilliant. So, look forward to a good evening. There's me team. There's me team. Take it, take it. Start of day two. Greg, how are you feeling? Hey, I'm good. <laughs> As always, it's like a rush to get going for the tracking time starting because you always sleep the last little piece you can. But yeah, I've got a pass to go up and then we can make a decision on whether it's glidable. It's, uh, it's like light drizzle at the moment. So I'm not looking particularly good. That way because we're trying to catch up to the pack that's in the next valley, down the end of the valley, the leaders are ascending a long pass. So this is like, I don't know, 7.30 in the morning, day two. And uh, I was hoping to glide off called the Isbegay up ahead. But with this drizzle, not really worth getting the glider wet and just landing in a wet field. That's a bit of a shame. I think the guys that pushed hard yesterday managed to get this as a glide. And that adds, I don't know, eight or nine Ks without having to do any effort. It's not a massive flight, but it saves a few kilometers and it saves downhill on the legs, so it's good. Up we go. And I'm going to glide down the valley. 
It's looking a bit meh, isn't it? I'm going to walk up into the cloud and try and get a better line. But um, <laughs> I was hoping for better flying conditions today. Doesn't look too strong. I just want to get down a little bit, I think, so I've got some escape. Which is a long glide out, and um, I can make it if there's no wind, but if anything comes over from either side, I'll be pushed down in there. And I think if I'm up on that spine up there, I've got a better position. Okay, cheers. Look at this ace support. My main man, Kerry. And the main man walking. And my main man yeah, called yeah, me somewhere in the back. He's back in the fridge. <laughs> He's back in the fridge. <laughs> and I've got supplies. See ya. What have I got for breakfast? Um, chicken and sandwich. Yummy. video give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more like this it's run o'clock it's Saint Jean Peter Port Get running with us first, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find a nice place to park, sort some food out for you. Yeah, it'd be nice to have a break now. Ten minutes. Okay, sweet. Thanks, guys. Uh, this is one of those decision points on the map. Um, from here, I can either go up that big peak over there that's in the cloud, or I can go up this pass, or I can go up the back pass. So I've got three options here on the map. I'm up on the ridge line. The birds are flying it. If you watch them for a bit, you'll see there's some at the top, but the bottom layer, they're flapping and they're climbing on this side. The prevailing wind is northerly from the other side. Wind's coming over that way at altitude. But they're thermaling something here and this is what I got to fly off. Ah, oh, it's agonizing. 
Mm. Some dark chocolate and good company. So Kerry's come to walk with me for a while so we can talk strategy and just hang out together, get him out of the van. <laughs> it's been quite a challenge for him driving um, the wide Big Bertha on this road, which doesn't have anywhere to turn around. So it's a kind of a one car, one direction road. But I haven't driven it off a cliff yet. So onwards to Yakuz. It looks like the clouds are coming in. And I just feel everything is just wrong. I just need to stop, get in the van and look at Google Earth and make some strategy so that I can do this in a better way than just running along like the guy that's been left behind by the class. Good morning. Uh -huh. <laughs> Courtney's in the kitchen already. All right. <laughs> Kerry's on strategy. We're looking at our glide across the valley and it's early, uh, it's half past six, but I'm up and um, having breakfast, cake and coffee Green. and banana, banana, banana. And then I'm gonna get my wet bag and um, go and lob off the hill and glide down into the valley. Somewhere out there, somewhere out there is a fantastic day is flying. See you in the air, Cloudbase. Rocking. I keep off Right, all packed up and ready to go. Um, Mappy is uh, saying two hours 20 to get to the top of this hill. <laughs> it can't be that long. I'll have to do it trick quicker than that. There he goes Inigo, he's just launched and he's gonna glide down, it looks like, into the valley. Hopefully he's staying with me because it'd be really nice to have some company. You know, doing this sort of thing and being out in the mountains by yourself while you're racing, it's, uh, it's much nicer having some moral support or just um, um, another experienced pilot to kind of bounce ideas off. Because um, the exposure is pretty high, you know, you're doing everything on your own. It's cool, I mean, I enjoy it, but it's definitely nicer with somebody else. See you at the next launch, I think. Up we go. The second breakfast. So this is what happens with hike and fly racing. This is... Uh, my sandwich and chicken that was made for me yesterday that I've just found in my bag and I'm not going to let that go to waste <laughs> it's time for second breakfast you go through a lot of calories in this kind of racing which is great because I can eat anything I want to and I'm going to burn it off alright so what I'm hoping to do here I've walked up and I'm walking along the spine to get to the high point here and to glide down and around into the valley to set myself up to walk up the ridge that leads to Izab. But there is a low cloud kind of forming in the valley, so I'm hoping that the valley is going to be visible. We'll check it out at the top. Right, all ready to fly, but the way is shut. Got to glide through to the valley there and I can't really see enough to be safe. So I'll just have to wait for the cloud to open. In he goes up here with me again. We're going to probably fly together today off the other side. But uh, yeah, you can't do anything if you can't see where you're going. Hey! Okay. <laughs> Thank you for the waiting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we want more friends. We all fly together. Yeah. <laughs> well done. <laughs> you think now's the moment? Yeah, yeah. I've seen the light, I've seen 
I've got a bit of height up this slope and now I have to climb up this thing. Uh, it's going to be 4x4 four four all the way up that slope. I'm going to try and follow the cloud line. I think I'm going to keep walking up because I've seen the vultures flapping past, which means there's absolutely zat thermals. And that's the kind of line I'm going to follow up to the skyline and walk along. And then I can make some ground on that valley at the top. Counting down the meters. So that's the north side, south side, Akus is somewhere there. And we have a perfect breeze, but we can't see anything. I think it's lunchtime. Inigo has joined the party. <laughs> trapped with the cloud above me and this valley here I'm thinking the sun is shining it's a south facing valley it's leading up to the end of the valley this has got to work so I spent ages firmling around here just trying to get enough height to get up and bench up onto that and it's agonizing I'm just in front of it and there's just nothing working on these slopes I suspect that in nearby Spain flying conditions are great this is like stirring soup. My optimism takes me all the way down to the valley. That's a chocolate. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Trying to scramble up here to get up for an eight o'clock launch up the top of that. The flight demanded taking a risky glide over unlandable forest, which I wasn't prepared to take. Are you on? Technology. Are you awake? <laughs> Hello, it's seven o'clock in the morning. What's up? We're going flying. <laughs> Look, Inigo's ready. Why aren't you ready? Because it's day four. And we're like, oh. oh. And look at it. There's the sun, it's lovely. Uh, we're above the clouds again. So we can't glide down because we can't see anything. So we're going to get started on the road. We've got about 10 k's before we get somewhere where we can maybe glide to Akus. So, see you on the road. Are you going down the road? I'm going into the forest. Yes, it lies away. Uh, you know those routes that you take a shortcut and then it takes you five hours? That's what I'm doing. <laughs> There's no trail. There's no trail. It's a cut to get to the road. I don't look, I don't look. So you go on the road, I'll go in the forest and we'll see who's first. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I've got a contour across through this. 
and get to the trail. <clears throat> this could all go horribly wrong. <laughs> Let's see. Down, down, down. Hmm. This trail's not used very much, is it? <laughs> it's because it's not a trail, Greg. <laughs> round, round, round and round. Through the deep dark wood. Woo. So I'm about halfway to the track that I'm trying to scramble to. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's down, hey? Um, horizontal is about up there somewhere. Man, this is steep. <laughs> it's not moving. Contour around, he said. I've got to go down there and back up on that side. There's just no ways. Now I've got to get try and find the road again. Let's have a look at the tracking and see how much time that lost me on Inigo. Observe how easily the feet glide down a road, Greg. <laughs> There's not much to do on this road. And I got signal, so for the first time I've kind of looked at the whole spread of people. Man, some of the guys are way, way out in front. A turn point in the air. Yes! Looks like everybody's going to Spain. I better get going. Let's lean forward and go. Enjoy, man. Happy birthday. I have some serious catching up to do. The move I have planned is technical, which in plain English means it's risky. The wind is coming from the left up the Akus Valley and spilling down into the narrow ravine at the back. But that's where I must go to fly into Spain. been shaded for most of the day, so thermals are weak. The landing options are tight, the wind is getting stronger, there's wicked turbulence and dismal sink. The cloud shadows are ripping past in another direction, it's lee side flying at its worst.
Is that fear creeping down my spine or just my sweat? Somewhere in this picture, there is lift. To make this transition safe, I need altitude. But the wind is falling over the crests, smashing into the valley wind and tearing up the clouds. This seems like a trap. Where can I go? Yahoo! Right, that's as much as I'm going to put up with in here. Safe ish landing. Whew! That was a bit rowdy in there. That's why they say don't go over the back of a big mountain into a valley. <laughs> right, so I've just pulled the plug on carrying on down this valley because I can see very little landing going ahead. I might have been able to climb up on this thing but I don't like the way that it's so constricted down the bottom and uh, around the Venturi there the wind was pumping so safety call, nice landing I'll do some walking to Spain I don't think our motorhome is making it up this one Time for a dip, I think. I've earned it. I'm gonna till here. Ooh, what is gold? If you think about the race and your position in it, you're living in the future and you miss what's happening now. Here I am in the Pyrenees and it is simply beautiful. Life is an adventure. When you keep going, you see ever more. When you push past the limits, you get stronger. I don't know what it is about this hike. I'm walking fairly fast, it feels. I've got a good pace, but it's one of those hikes that just never ends. <laughs> What a welcome sight. Ooh, it was a long day. Time to feast. <laughs> hey, good morning. Day five. And it's been drizzling and raining all night on and off. Predicted to be raining today. Predicted to have cloud everywhere. But I don't know. Looks like I might be able to sneak a glide off the peak here. Alright. Valley's clear of cloud. We're going up. Although the wind's rolling over here. Yeah, it's just pushing the mist over. I think there's a chance. Yeah. On the peak, things look worse. Fast flowing mist from France whispers through the trees, but up above the Spanish air mass is whipping over. The valley is narrow and choked with trees. One, two, one.
Buenos días. It's a special test of endurance, navigating whilst flying in turbulence after hiking so far every day. I've ascended the equivalent of Mount Everest by now and covered almost 200 kilometers on foot. It would be nice to have solid lift up to some cumulus clouds, but out here in the flats, the air is hard. The thermals are shredded by the increasing wind and they are grumpy and ineffective. Somewhat like me. get it. Perfect base wind, perfect line down track. Another 15 k's groundwork to a campsite finishes off the day. A bit disappointed to say the least. All that groundwork to find a flying site and set it up nicely, nice thermal, nice climb out. Just couldn't survive over the flats. Didn't work hard enough for it, didn't fight for it. <laughs> Mara had that as an opportunity to come out and forward to Kastahorn. Remy's taken Kastahorn and that's given him the jump on the other guys. He's got up and away and thermaled up and he's making hay while the sun shines. That's given him a pretty good jump into the lead. Watch my instructional series that reveals technical insights from every day of the race. Understand the challenges and see the best moves demonstrated on flywithgreg.com. Right, day, what is it? Six. Six. Friday. Oh, we're still at this. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm with my awesome team and we're seven o'clock, trackers on. Up a big mountain today. Looks like it's gonna be thermals today. <laughs> All right. Rewards. This is a flying site. All the way around there. And all the way around there. Pick a launch. 
any wind direction and fly far. Once you have it, you can link so much good terrain and skip all the bad landing zones. This is the first day that has given me this freedom. I circle higher and higher and glide to the next thermal source, weaving my way through the competitors, then pausing to avoid treacherous patches of sinking air. This flight is working. I've finally found my flow. So that's probably the high point of the competition for me. That climb through and being set up on this ridge. And now I can go and try and catch everybody behind Kastahorn. Back to earth. Oh, that was exceptional. It's going to take me quite a while to process that flight. It was on the limit at times. I mean, just the exposure, the moving through the landscape. <laughs> you know, there's such a narrow band that you can fly cross country in. When the thermals are powerful, but they're not too powerful that they're gonna overpower your wing. I mean, the uh, collapses and things that I was dealing with and a lot of active flying, um, but it was cool. I could climb and I could get up and I could use the thermals I felt like I could feel what they were doing today so I could ride them I was happy to ride them but this terrain moving through these mountains oh man it's so borderline there's like you're sitting on a ridge and the winds coming through and you've got like 10 k's an hour forward speed on the ridge when the thermals come through and a little bit more than that and you're going to get pushed over. So the whole time I'm waiting, making sure that there's no wind coming through, climbing before going over to the next one. And uh, then I got into this last valley. And even though Kerry had told me that there was no wind on, in the valley and he'd sort of scouted it ahead of me, as I got into the valley, I could see the valley wind hitting the lake. Now I'm at a thousand meters and I'm looking down and I can see the lake's got wind on it. So at that point you're like, you're either going to sit there on speed bar and meet that valley wind head on in the valley that you're in, or you get height and you run and you try and run ahead of the valley wind. And uh, that's kind of what I did. I ran up bigger and bigger and bigger terrain getting closer and closer and closer to the spine of the Pyrenees and <laughs> that valley wind was coming with me the whole time I wasn't quite quick enough so I was hoping that some of it would splatter onto the big ridge and I'd only have the sort of weaker um, tail of it which I think I got and I found this absolutely beautiful big landing area so I just chose this for the lack of rocks <laughs> and the ability for me to bounce on it and get dragged on it. And uh, I set up upwind of it on speed bar and just allowed myself to drift in and kill the wing. And I was on the limit. I think if there was more valley wind, I would have been scared with that landing. As it was, I was concerned. <laughs> <laughs> but I felt like I could control it, so that was like right at the limit for me.
gon' take it, take it. Looks pretty strong to me over the top. And this is the main spine of the Pyrenees that I'm walking over. So I think flying on the lee side of that's not gonna be possible. And I've got a paraglider. So maybe there'll be a chance. But I'm happy that I'm able to do this. It uh, feels good to sort of conquer that divide, actually walk over it. Because I spent most of yesterday flying, the hiking is welcome today. I'm starting to enjoy it. The rocks feel familiar. The mountains, I understand. I've become part of the Pyrenees and my emotions are shaped by the landscape. If there'd been zero wind at the top here, I think I would have flown. But I don't like that I can still feel the southerly on my back. And I know I'm just downwind of the main divide. So let's do a bit of a walk down this one. And over to there. My heart is in my mouth. I'm flying a big lee side. The whole Pyrenees range is at my back. And I'm hoping the wind won't spill down. The air is suspiciously calm. Is this going to work? Take me down to the river where the peace won't run dry. Gather at the river where my soul comes to life and I come alive freedom freedom and then I know I've made the right call I've judged the air currents perfectly and I've found the magic Ta -da! This is why I've traveled so far and struggled so hard and fought the frustrations and the fears. This is why I've trained and toiled. Here, now, I am free. Flying here is spectacular. Crossing these forests is always a challenge. Where will I glide to? How far can I make it? And where will I land?
<laughs> that was the flight I wanted. That's what I've been looking for. To wake up in Spain this morning, to walk up over the divide, to glide out, get thermals, get above the landscape, fly with the vultures, see the snow, see the peaks with no stress. Just light thermic conditions in the valley and a top wind of 35, 40. <laughs> and I could just thermal up down the course line. Yeah, rock in. It's like a herb scent here. It's just, oh, I'm in heaven. I'm gonna catch them. Run, little chickens, run. Here comes the fox. Oh, what a stupidly scenic spot. Amazing. Back to the Pyrenees, down to the valley, turn point somewhere there. Oh, this was agonizing. Let's put the turn point cylinder just on the next peak. So I couldn't get it from the last one by 200 meters. <laughs> then it just drops down into the forest. Diabolical! I'll stay up as long as I can so I don't have to walk for as long as I can. Gliding requires lifting air currents and if I don't find them, I'll be down fast. I've been on my own for most of the race, but here I'm rewarded with a fantastic flying team, the Griffin Vultures. watch each other and work together. It's a game to see who can excel at riding the lift and outclimb the others. off towards the next turn point. I know I must follow. This is me at the end of the XPO. I think it's like one hour left maybe. And I've still got legs. These legs are working. My body's got used to it. Maybe I should have pushed a bit harder. But I like my body, I don't like breaking it. It's cool, I'm walking into a breeze coming down from this river. And I'm thinking about everything that's happened in the XPO. What an event. also from the UK. We have Greg Hamilton and Kerry Brown. Well done. From Austria, Simon Oberon and Simon Faber, the two women. I think everybody agrees that the conditions were um, brutal <laughs> time to time. Um, sometimes I had to struggle with should I take off, should I not take off. 
and it was so challenging, but um, I learned a lot and that was my goal. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy that we made it to the sea and it's just perfectly organized and I'm super happy that I took the decision to come here. In third place, from France, Pierre-Rémy and Nicolas Forio. I have the greatest respect for the top pilots who led the charge. There was no easy way to do this race, and they smashed it. C'était la première, donc je savais pas trop à quoi m'attendre. Et si on m'avait ça dit ça au début, j'aurais pas cru. Moi, moi, c'était c'était beau. Maxime Bino and Jerry Villager. This was uh, amazing and I want to thank uh, Jeremy, Salome and Nance for supporting me because uh, without them I can't race so thanks a lot and uh, yeah it was really a uh, super tough race this, this year with uh, very difficult weather conditions uh, through like uh, the really demanding route and uh, was super interesting and we had a, a great fight in the end with, uh, with Pierre and Krigol which was uh, very nice. I, I walked like two, 290k and 20,000 meters up. So it's, uh, it was uh, very more challenging and in the air, the third day was so nice, but then it was always tricky condition, very windy conditions. And yeah, sometimes we, we did some flights we would never have done yeah, in other than in competition of high game fly for sure. But with two good flights, yeah, we managed to to come closer and finally with the new rule with the airspace it was possible to fly even more close for, for us. It was hard, uh, also for my legs it was very hard and I was very happy to not walk like uh, Pierre and Max in the end and all the others they hiked all day long. But uh, finally yeah, it's uh, the adventure, the challenge we have to manage and uh, yeah, looking forward for the next ones and uh, it's, uh, in the end we, it's always nice to have this new experience, to, to share the experience with all the people in the, in the world. Congratulations, four times winner of the Expo, Kriegel Maurer from Switzerland. This is uh, fly with Greg. <laughs> if you'd like to study the race in detail, watch the XPIA documentary series on flywithgreg.com. Get a unique perspective, understand the technical challenges, and see what the pilots did to succeed, so you can apply it to your own flying.